All right, everyone, welcome back to another enlightening episode of Collaboration of a Competition, a platform that dives deep into the credible outcomes that arise when collaboration takes center stage. I'm your host, Frederick Freeman Jr., and today's episode promises to be nothing short of inspiring. Today, we have the honor and privilege of sitting down with world renowned NBA personator, social media influencer, entrepreneur, father, Brandon Armstrong, aka B. How you doing today, bro? Man, I'm good, man. How about yourself, brother? Man, always blessed, blessed and can't complain, man. It's an honor and privilege for having you to, to bless the uh, platform. And, you know, I appreciate you taking the busy time out your schedule today to sit here with us. Nah, man, I appreciate you having me, man. I ain't, I ain't know that was your full name. You got a strong, you got a civil rights name, man. I love man, that, bro. You got man, a strong from the, name, from dog. The south, man, from, from the South, man, from the South. But where you from? <laughs> uh, Louisiana. I'm from Georgia. Okay, so you next door. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 the boot. Yes, sir. So, Southern, Southern Kings, man, Southern Kings. Already, man. Thanks for having me, man. Yes, sir. Let's dive straight into it, man. So, man, we always start the pod- we always start the pod- podcast off with these couple of questions. Uh, we like to know, man, what does the idea of collaboration over competition mean or represent to you? Uh, well, basically, just you know, coming together uh, with someone, you know, maybe not in your same realm, just uh, someone that's maybe doing something different or maybe similar, and just building something. And you know, it's it's always it's always it's always better and easier and stronger to. Um, prevail together rather than on, you know on your yeah. own. I've been trying to do it on my own for you know for a while. Just me being the only child, but realizing that you know having a team, um, collaborating with you know great people. They don't have to be the biggest people in the world. You know, just the smallest collaboration can take you. You know, can take you wonders. So that's that's, that's basically my yeah. um, you know that's my definition, man. Collaboration over competition. No, I love it, man. You know, I've been able to interview, you know, Hall of Fame athletes, actors, rappers, and, you know, it's uh, it's beautiful to see collaboration of competition in different industries. So, you know, I definitely want to tap in, you know, to what you do as a social media influencer, uh, you know, and try to get some game out there to the people, you know, how they collect, can, can collaborate more because, you know, in our community, man, that's something we need to do. So, uh, you know, I'm hoping to give some gems out there, you know, uh, for the fans and subscribers. No, 100%, man. You know, like you said, in our culture, we, we, we want to be on top on our own. You know, everybody want to go yeah. against everybody, whether that's in the music business, whether that's in regular everyday business, whether that's social media, you know, it's whether that's if you're a fry cook and you and instead of working Man. with the other fry cook to get more burgers and, and, and fries done, you want to get them, you want to get as much done as you can so you can get promoted instead of coming together and maybe you, you guys both get promote, promoted or you get promoted quicker. So, yeah, man, it, it's, yes. it's I, I've, I've come, I've been cut from that cloth. Um, I've never collab with the bigger influencers I would I've always been someone is like man this is my boy right here he got 300 followers bro yeah. he, he be with me every day so he in my video so that's why if you know yeah. if you see my arch and how I was coming up the people in my video were literally family my cousin my my best friend and just my friends in general man I always try to put the next man on just because I got the platform you feel me it's like I don't want to say I've already made it, but I I'm I made it enough. I've been successful where it's like, bro, come on, use me, dog, use me. Whatever you need, take it, bro. No, no, I love that. You know, that's that's kind of one of the, the key parts when it comes to collaborate. You know, when you do get that opportunity, to, you know, to reach back and help some. You know, uh, it, it's always good to do that. You know, uh, you know, we can't everybody can't come, but you know, you know, the, the ones that you know that got it like we do, uh, you know, it's always. Uh, beautiful to bless others but that kind of leads into my next question man so you know collaboration is a, is a key element you know in what you do you know uh you know in a lot of your skits and impersonations that you do you know you're not doing this alone so i was wondering if you can kind of just speak on the power of you know working working together collaborating with others as uh, social media influencers uh and how that can boost your brand or help you grow man um especially with the things i do i definitely need more than just one person more than two people to uh you know, create these impersonations, create these videos. Um, it, it just helps me in different ways. You know, um, I'm able to get the video done faster, and it gives the video more context. You know, it's it, yes. and I'm saying I, I I can't do an impersonation by myself, but when you got that, you have that defense on you. You got that back and forth. It, it just works that much better, and and also they're introducing me, you know, to their crowd, you know, or their audience. They may yeah. not have a big biggest platform as me, but shoot, them 10, 15, 30, 100 extra followers, extra eyes, viewers on me, man, that's gonna help. That's that's gonna help in the long run, man. I'm I've always been the type of person I really don't care about the numbers. You know, the work is gonna work itself out. You know, whether I put a video yes. up and it gets. 10,000 views versus a video I put up and it goes stupid viral. Those 10,000 views, yep. I know those are my core community and they're going to stick with me, you know, no matter what the content is. So that's why, you know, I always love collaborating uh, when I'm doing my skits just because it helps me 
helps them and we help each other all in all in one. No, I, you know, I totally understand. And, you know, uh, you talk about a team when it comes to doing like skits and stuff like that, you know, especially when it comes to cameraman, you know, you, uh, you know, uh, a tripod can only do so much, you know, uh, you know, you got to get the different angles and stuff and everything you do. So uh, I, I definitely understand that. Uh, and that goes out to any anybody out there, content creators, social media influencers. You know, a lot of times we are doing this by ourselves, but it's important to find that team. Um, like me, you know, I have all the all the everything I need to do an in home interview, uh, you know, but I like to use podcast studios. You know, uh, it helps me be more efficient. You know, I, I can focus on doing the interview rather than have to worry about the lights, the cameras, the actions, you know. So uh, tips out there for any uh, social media influencers, or content creators, you know, that just utilize the power of a team to help you grow if you're trying to. This is what you're trying to do because, you know, we're kind of in that day age of time of, you know, content is king. So definitely uh, just want to get some games out there, you know, for any uh, social media creators or content creators as well. 100%, man. I agree. Yes. Um you know, I want to get to know you a little bit more. You know, you know, everybody see the viral clips. You know, they see what you do. But, uh, you, you know, I kind of uh, want you to share your personal story, your personal journey. You know, where it all began as far as your basketball career. You know, a lot of people don't know that you actually hoop. Uh, but you know, could you just talk about where you're from, your actual uh, journey of where it all began, and kind of how you made this transition from basketball to being a social media influencer and NBA personator? Oh, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, raised in Decatur, mm -hmm. Georgia. I went to college in Tennessee, school called um, LMU. From then on, I played mm -hmm. um, I played in the D League for a, for a month or two okay. with the Reno Bighorns out of Reno, Nevada. They're not a um, establishment anymore, you know. Now it's the G League. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. with the opportunity, I was able to go to Spain. Uh, played a little bit in Spain, mm -hmm. uh, but during that whole time, during my Spain and Australia stint, I was on Vine. You know that was the that was the thing back then, the six point five second videos. Yep. So I've always been. Um, you know, content king in general. I got so many Facebook videos yeah. from high school, still on Facebook. Me and my boy, we singing, we yeah. impersonating, doing parody people. Man, it's, it's crazy how everything comes full circle. And then um, in 2015, I was supposed to go to a Euro Basket League, a Euro Basket uh, Summer League in, in Orlando. Ended up missing my flight mm -hmm. that same day. I made the Russell Westbrook be like video. And I never made a sports video before then, uh, maybe one or two. Uh, one just impersonating LeBron, just running across the highway, traveling how he is on a fast break. And um, Westbrook was my mm -hmm. favorite player. And it's crazy because I wasn't trying to make a Russell Westbrook be like. I was. The, this was the title of the, of the video. It was Russell Westbrook in-game facial expressions versus his player profile picture. <laughs> it was that long. Because on his player profile picture, he's all like, <laughs> He's cheesing, but on the court, he's yeah. no smiling at all. <laughs> and that's what I was trying to um, impersonate yeah. or, you know, implicate in that in that uh, video. And when I did it, you know, ESPN caught on to it. Brandon Jennings is the actual person that, like, retweeted me on Twitter to the basketball world, introduced me to that. And they were like, what the? Shout out Brandon Jennings. Yeah, shout out BJ. They were like, what is, what is this? And that changed my whole life. You know, me missing that flight um, to go have another professional opportunity to play ball somewhere. And me creating this video, literally whole 180. From next, you know, I'm on ESPN, I'm on Sports Center, his and hers. So I'm like, all right, let me do what Tim Duncan be like. Let me do what Tony Allen be like. And then it's something people, you know, have have never seen before at the time and changed my whole life for the for the better. I stopped playing basketball professionally for three years to do that, and um, that. ended up going back to Australia in 2018 to you know relive my basketball dream and let people know like, hey, bro, I I hope. Like these MVPs yeah. in the celebrity game ain't no fluke. Like it's, it's like, I, man, I want to know. I had like ten MVP celebrity games like in a row just because it's just that level of competition in me, man. Come fourth quarter, I'm trying to go for yeah. fifty. You feel me? I'm still gonna entertain, but at the end of the day, you know, I'm a hooper. So that's that's that's, that's my journey, you know, up to now. Um, I'm married. I got four kids, three daughters, one son, Love and um, living out here in um, Arizona. Beautiful. I can't complain at all. A hey, beautiful man. It's love to see how you know just your passion of basketball, kind of uh, at the same time. You know, we growing up in the social media age and just seeing those two things clash and become kind of become a passion that could, you know, provide put food on the table for the family, man. So uh, it, it, it's beautiful, you know, to see where you've taken it and where you will continue to go with it. Uh, I know you're doing so much other things now than just NBA personations now. So uh, you know, we'll kind of get into that a little bit more later. But I'm, I want to kind of move on to a, to a, uh, my next question, man. Just kind of jumping into some some of the things that you've done and accomplished. You know, we definitely want to give you your flowers here today. 
Uh, but man, I'm wondering, you know, with, with the passing of the late great Kobe Bryant, like I'm wondering, like, how did it feel to get his reaction to your impersonation of him uh, then and even now, uh, you know, with everything that's kind of transpired? Man, first, first, most, man, you know, shout out to my homegirl, Bria Janelle, who asked him that question. Uh, she's, mm. yeah, she, if she never asked him that question, you know, I would never got the reaction and it was crazy. I was yes. on a cabin trip in Georgia. It was like my go away trip before uh, driving out to California and we had zero reception and I get a text message like, hey, bro. Kobe just mentioned you. So this whole, and he was like, and then, and then he said what next video he wanted was a Bob Cousy be like. So I'm in the middle of nowhere. Yep. We've got a basketball court outside. I got my boy. He's sitting on top of the roof just living his life. And luckily I had my boys with me. So I was able to do that Bob Cousy be like. Reception was terrible. I literally set my phone by the Wi-Fi for like four hours. Told nobody not to touch it. Do not mess with it. So I could get that upload. And it was it was crazy, man, just to get the reaction from Kobe and him knowing who I am. Um, I was growing up, yeah. you know, watching him. I was a Tracy McGrady fan, but still had respect, yes. you know, still had respect for Kobe because they were the top two shooting guards. So it was like, it, it was crazy, man. So it, it was an honor and a blessing. And just for someone like that, you know, to acknowledge me and, you know, love the video that I did when I did post it. He laughed, you know, he laughed at it on Twitter. And I was like, man, this yes. is this is I'm 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 doing something right, you know. If I'm able to get, you know, if not, you know, top three greatest players to ever uh, play this game, man. And just to have that, you know, attachment to him, you know, with him, you know, not being with us anymore, is just it's something just I appreciate even more, you know, to this day. Still on my phone, yep. still still in my camera roll, still in my favorites. Something I can show my kids yes. and. Yeah, just just something I can just look back on, you know, daily and be like, okay, I I I made it. No, that that dope, you know, that that lives on forever. You know, something you can show the kids, you know, and the grandkids. But like you said, just kind of it speaks to you know the the quality of you know what you're doing. You know, if 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 even once the great analogy, you know what I'm saying. So, uh, you know, I was when I was doing my research, I seen that. I just, I just thought that was that was beautiful. Uh, but no, to move on to my next question, man, uh, I'm wondering, like, what was your experience, uh, you know, being on the Jimmy Kimmel show and kind of like, what did that do for you and your your brand? Man, that was, shout out Jimmy Kimmel and his whole team for, you know, having me on the show. They even paid me, man. I, my manager told me, he was like, you going on Jimmy Kimmel, let me get your W9 information. I said, for what? Ooh. Oh, this was, anyway, you know, it was, it was a little something, nothing crazy. <laughs> but I'm like, I, I, I appreciate it because I was expecting going there for yeah. free and it was just going to. You know, use the opportunity to boost my brand, which it did. Uh, I was on the road to try to get to a million followers. It was around my birthday too, June seventeenth, yeah. and man, that was man, it was it was dope from rehearsal to actually doing it. The person I did it with, my boy KJ, it was crazy because KJ was nervous and he's a stand-up comedian, so he and he was like, bro, this is different, bro. This is live TV in front of a live studio office, man. I'm like, bro, but you, you done stood up and <laughs> did jokes in front of thousands of people, so. That You know, me being one of the pioneers, if not the pioneer of this basketball comedy um, stuff, you know, outside my boy, Famous Lowe. Say it, me, say it. You you yeah. is a pioneer. Say it, man. Okay, me and my, me and my boy, Famous Lowe, <laughs> we, we the ones that pop this whole basketball comedy, social media stuff off, man. Like, we we, we the yeah. founding fathers. So uh, that right. just, you know, just solidified that because I probably was one of the first, you know, social influencers to damn near be on Jimmy Kimmel, you know. So it was... Yeah, I definitely hit the scene. That, that's what I was going to say. Like, you know, you only see singers, rappers, you know, uh, first NBA personator to be on there. We, we can say that, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so Facts. that's just another, you know, another accomplishment, another blessing in general that I wouldn't be able to do, you know, without, you know, without God and the support of my family and friends. So, yeah, man, that, that Jimmy Kimmel experience, it was just, it was, it was dope. It was overall dope, man. Is uh, You know, if I had the opportunity to do it again, of course, but now I'm on a whole different realm, you know, of what I'm doing with life. Uh, still giving the funny videos, but just 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 doing something different right now. Yeah, no, uh, you know it's 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 always beautiful when you get confirmation, even at the you know on the biggest stages. So, uh, you know it's beautiful, you know you know to see how you handled that, and uh, uh, definitely awesome to see the, you know the feedback and the boost that, that it gave your brand as well. Um, do, do you mind asking how, how much you got paid if, if you feel comfortable? Oh yeah, it wasn't nothing crazy. It was like uh, no more than a thousand dollars at the tax. It was like eight eight hundred mm -hmm. something. 
But I was like, shoot, yeah. at the time, I'm, you know, I'm, that, boy, that's straight. That's, you got paid way more, in, you know, just exposure. You come know what on, I'm saying? man, right. Yeah, that man, that's gas money for the month, living in Cali, <laughs> maybe for two weeks. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, no, I feel you on that. Um, no, I'm wondering, man, like out of all the NBA players and celebrities that you work with, um, is it anybody that you met through, that you are, throughout your career that kind of had the biggest impact on you and maybe why? Um, probably just Russell Westbrook in general because he was my favorite player. Mm. Um, and when I made that video. So you got to meet Russ before and everything? Uh, crazy thing. I got a story about that. So when I did that video, it you know oh, yeah. it popped off. It took me off to where I was. And so I'm. I'm in Westwood, you know, near UCLA. My friend, she um, lived over there, and I'm. I got my hoverboard, you know, this back in like 016. I got my hoverboard. I'm walking yeah. to my Uber, and I hear, I just hear somebody say, "Hey, bro, you a funny dude." I turn around, I'm like, "I appreciate it." And it, the car just still parked there. He like, "Hey, bro, you funny." I'm like, "Man, appreciate." It. I turn around, <laughs> bro, it's Russell Westbrook, bro. I'm like, mm. Westbrook. I got a picture and everything. I, I'll send it to you. And I go over there. He's like, "Bro." Like man, you funny, bro. Everything you do is hilarious, man. The video, the video you made was 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 was, was funny, bro. I appreciate the love. I said, bro, I appreciate what you doing. I'm like, what you doing around here? He said, man, I just came from Taylor Swift concert. I'm about to head back to the Korea. <laughs> so I was like, man, we took a picture, we flicked it up, and um, that was probably one of the most like just dopest moments in my life. You know, just meeting one of my favorite players, especially at that time, and a person that pop my career off you know without shit, I always yeah. tell people without Westbrook you know I wouldn't be you know where I am today I don't even think I would have made a, any type of impersonation you know so that relationship yeah. with Westbrook uh, that definitely you know that changed the whole scope of my life you know and to this day you know we see each other's always respect always love you know yeah, yeah man it's the one thing man I, I never I always wanted to play in the NBA uh, I never got a chance to make it to the NBA but Shit, I feel like I feel like I am in the NBA or I was in the NBA just with all the relationship with the players that I have today. Yesterday, yesterday yes. morning, I cooked for uh, my boy Monte Morris, the point guard for the Phoenix Suns. Uh, cooked them breakfast. I, I in seen his that whole meal. Family. I seen that meal on Instagram. It looked good. Yeah, appreciate you, man. So you know, just being able to you know cook for some of my uh, for NBA players in general and still have that relationship and respect, man, is is dope, man. It's like being in the NBA. Yes, you know, relationships, networking, you know that that's beautiful. Uh, no, it's it's. I'm happy for you to even like you know you say uh, Westbrook you know is one that inspired you, but but for you to meet him and get that confirmation you know and let him know as well I think that's that's a dope moment as well. So, you know sometimes we never get to let the people we know let the people who inspired us know you know uh, that they helped us get get us here. So shout out to Russell Westbrook because without him you know I wouldn't have met you today, man. So sh shout out Russ, man. Hundred percent, man. Hundred percent, dog. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, now I want to move on to my, to another collaboration, man. Uh, you know, I was I was doing my research, you know, watching YouTube, and I want to speak on on a collaboration you, you did with Dwayne Wade. Uh, you know, kind of just impersonating his playing style for a little vibe sports video he did. How, how was that experience? You know, uh, linking up with him. Man, that experience was dope, man. To this day, me and Dwayne, that's my dog, bro. That's man, that's my homie, bro. Anytime I need something, Hall of Famer. Yeah, bro, man. Like we we threw him some of our uh, vegan cookies. He cooked and promoted it on IG, gave it to Wifey, Gabriel Union was like, oh, that's good. So, man, shout out D-Wade in general, man. But that experience was crazy because my manager didn't tell me that I was going to be impersonating him. I thought I was going to be meeting him. We're going to do some type of video. So that was on the fly. Like, literally just yeah. me like, all right, how D-Wade play? Okay, he got the shot to bring <laughs> down here. He did the Euro, the pass. So when I did that, it was literally just on the fly. And he loved it, you know, it's just like he was yeah. laughing and then he realized, oh, shoot, I do dip the ball when I shoot. I never noticed that. So, you know, from that day, that just sparked a whole relationship that just, you know, has been active to this day. Um, so, you know, man, shout out, you know, shout out Vibe and everybody that uh, that took care, you know, took care that made that happen. And just being in that historic, you know, Miami Heat Arena, man, that was, yeah. man, that was Dope man, somebody I never you know seen before, and I'd have been I'd have been to Ohio State, you know their whole football realm and their thing, but that that NBA atmosphere, the locker room, the arena, the historic, you know, from Pat Riley, Alonzo Mourning, Dwayne Wade, uh, which is an overall yep. dope experience, man. So and like I said, to this day, D Wade, D Wade is one of the you know the close friends. So that was just a dope experience that's still going to you know bringing me full circle. Yeah, I mean it's dope, like. You know, you go from impersonations to meeting these people, but actually building relationships. You know what I'm saying? It that's that's when it hit a little different. You know, you know it's you can meet them. You know, high and by you follow each other on social media, but to actually build these relationships, you know, where you could meet later on in life. You know, and people, you know, still have respect for you and acknowledge what you do. So, 
I, I just think it's dope that you you know you've been able to build relationships off what you've done. Uh, you know, when we talk about collaboration over competition, you know, building relationships is one of the most important things in that. So, you know, when you are a social media influ influencer, you know, you, you making these connections, meeting these other people. You know, make sure your face card good. Make sure you handle your business. You know what I'm saying? So you could, you know, build these proper relationships to take you to, you know, take you to further places, you know, down the road. You never know how them blessings might come back around, you know? Right. And it happened naturally, man. You know, a lot of these guys, they don't like to get, they don't like to be treated like celebrities or, you know, who, you know, who they are. They don't want nobody bowing down to them. It's just basically just being you, having a regular conversation and they feeling your vibe and you feeling yeah. them. And next thing you know, y'all, you know, y'all been good friends and y'all working, y'all networking. So if you go network with somebody, you would want it to be someone that's successful. Facts, facts, facts. Uh, now, I want to speak on another collaboration you did, man. So, like I said, when doing my research, man, I seen you did the collab back in 2016 with uh, NBA 2K, you know, uh, on, on the 2K TV and everything. You know, 2K is still, you know, one of the, one of the best games out. But uh, can you just speak on your, on your collaboration with a, with a brand like 2K, you know, doing a 2K uh, TV interview? Man, shout out Ronnie 2K and the whole NBA 2K team for having me. That was dope, man, to the, you know, for them to – I know why they did it. Um, I mean, because of who I am at the time, and also they're like, man, yeah. we don't gotta pay. We don't gotta pay James Harden and Steph Curry them or LeBron. We can just get Doc to come in and impersonate their movements. So I ain't gonna lie, but that was a long day, bro. That was like, man, that was like mm. six hours, bro, of just straight motion cap. But um, it was dope. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, complaining about it. It was a whole new experience to the point where. Uh, my freaking celebrations are on 2K. You know, B dot celebrate oh, wow. B dot walk from my Shaq walk to my Russell Wilson. All my little uh, uh, impersonations that I did uh, from the little Tim Duncan uh, like that. So it was dope for 2K mm. to add me to the game. That was crazy. I don't I don't play video games, and I really I bought 2K just for that. And you know, yeah. to this day, people were like, bro, yo. Yo, emoticons or whatever it's called, your your motion, they still on the game. B dot walk, B dot stroud, like all oh, that. I'm like, oh, that's that's dope, man. That's that's dope, man. I, but it's crazy because 2K was a game that I played younger. I was always a 2K guy from the from, yeah. from the 2K football. You feel me? Uh, when they had T O on the cover that. to when they had Iverson on the basketball cover. So I was always a a, a 2K over E A type guy. Um, just because it was different, you know, everybody wasn't rocking yeah. with 2K. I think that's the reason why I like Trace McGrady because you know everybody was Kobe fans, and I'm like, man, I like T Mac. T Mac got game, but at the end of the day, you know, we all knew <laughs> the what was better. Too, the time. Man, they forget about the T Max. Yeah, man, come on, man. I had the blue, the white, and the black joints, man. Come on, man. man. Cold, but um, that whole 2K experience was just um, was something that I, you know I, I, I remember uh, forever because it was a game that we grew up playing, and me being on a video game. That's different, you know. That's that's, yeah. that's different. So, <laughs> shout out to Kate. You forever, you forever immortalized, man. So uh, that is definitely dope. Um, did you get paid for, paid for that as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they gave me a little something, something. Yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing crazy. No I think no more than fifteen hundred. But it was more for it was more for the exposure than over the money. I like I said, I yep. didn't care about the money. You know I, what I was doing yes. was making me was making me enough money to you know take risks. I don't even want to say take a risk, but, you know, not take paid opportunities that's going to expose me to a bigger crowd. So, it yes. was like I said, the Jimmy Kimmel and 2K to get paid, you know, for doing for doing those on those big platforms, you know, that really showed me, like, okay, bro, you, like I said, you're doing something right. You you kind of somebody right now. Yes. And, you know, uh, those collaborations just, uh, the game I want to give out to people out there is, like, you know, big opportunities, uh even you know, if you're not getting paid what you what you think you are at the time, just taking those opportunities to build on them. Sometimes you gotta do stuff for free. Sometimes you might not get paid, you know, to get that look that you need. So, uh, you know that that that's kind of the one things I took from that. But you know, speaking on these dope crap collaborations that you've done, was this kind of like something where you know they reached out to you just off what you was doing, or you know, do do you have an agent or a team that's kind of helping you manage and book these type of deals? Uh, they reached out um, to my management okay. um, at the time. But I, I also did some mo motion cap for um, EA Sports and NBA Live, so I think they peeped game on that, and um, yeah, I think we did that in uh, I think it was in Vancouver, cold as hell, man, raining and everything. First time in mm. Vancouver, but um, dope experience with you know uh, EA Sports and you know doing the NBA Live because that's one of the games I grew up getting my ass whooped on. 
<laughs> so, uh, yeah, they reached out to my management team at the time, and, you know, we was able to set it up. Matter of fact, nah, I'm lying. I had a relationship with um, uh, Chris. I forgot. Chris 2K. Chris, I can't remember his last name, but via Twitter, he reached out to me. He was like, hey, bro, mm. you want to come in for, you know, you know mocap? And that's when I collect, uh, connected him with our management, and we was just able to build a relationship on Twitter till. Till to the point when I started playing 2K, he he would throw me like a hundred thousand VC points type ish. I'm like, hey bro, I don't, yeah. I don't run out of VC points. You know, I don't, I'm playing, I'm playing on rookie. I ain't trying to be good at the game. I'm just man. trying to, uh, you feel me? I'm just trying to be nice, you know, with my with my player. Yeah, you got to come with some perks, man. Yeah, bro. Yeah, you ain't never gonna see me playing against two play 2K against nobody, bro. I suck, man. I don't, I'm an only child anyway, so I'm good with playing my player. On, on the lowest level and and, <laughs> and and defeating everybody with ease. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was just playing last night, man. So I I know what you mean. I'm yeah. definitely the same way. I'm a football guy. Mm -hmm. uh, but you no, know, I, I still like playing games. I, I've just gotten back into it. I just downloaded the new uh, 2K25 and the college football. So how you like, how you know, you like I'm trying to jump football? back into it, but I, it's cool, man. It's, it's cool. cool. You know, like it sucks because I'm not cold. Yeah. But it's it's fun just playing, man. You know. Yeah. Uh, Playing online, you know, people always th with the trash talking and stuff like that. So, and I'm just trying, I, you know, I'm just trying to play and get better, man. I'm, I'm out here just, you know, for for my mental health, trying to release some stress. Yep. That's all it is. I ain't gonna lie, I still got a PS4. Yeah. I tried to download it about two, three weeks ago. <laughs> and they were like, "Yeah, bro, you need a PS5. It don't work." But I said, "Oh, well, all right. Let me play this Madden 20, Madden 24, then." <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, for my next question, man. You know, uh, staying on topic of basketball. You know, being all the. Uh, you know, in the personages that you did, I'm, I'm wondering, like, what are your top five? Who are your top five NBA players of all time? All time? Are you going to do this? Top me? five. In, 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 in a specific order? H however you want to do it. However you want to do it. Good, because you're going to be a viral clip. They're going to be on my head. Well, of course, man, I got MJ number one. Uh, okay. Kobe two. Bron. Mm. Bron three. Um, at four. For I gotta go with, I mean, just out of respect, I it's Kareem, you know, just mm -hmm. I never did watch him play, uh, but for a respect pick and for what he did for an organization, just a whole basketball career in general, bro, from college to not mm -hmm. losing the game, his whole high school, college career, and then coming to the NBA, dominating. Um, so Kareem would be four, and then at five, I, I, I'll put Magic. I put Magic, it's crazy. We got no, what, four I, Lakers I in that. there, four Lakers, and then. And yeah, that's 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 a solid top five. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you giving love to Kareem. You know, a lot of people, our generation, we see him play, but a lot of people tend to you know tend to forget about him and that unforgettable you know uh, hook shot, um, second second all time NBA leading scorer. So, mm -hmm. no, de de definitely uh, a solid top five, man. Uh, and kind of staying on NBA a little bit, I want to kind of move into my next question. So, I want to get like, what was your experience like playing in the NBA uh, All Star Game, Celebrity All Star Game, winning MVP, dropping a double double? Like what? What was the experience like, man? Because the highlights was crazy. Yeah, and it, 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 it was dope, man. Shout out Jeff Sanchez. Uh, he's head of the whole NBA coordinator and all those type of events and everything. He gave me the opportunity, and he made that he made a celebrity game like like about me, like mine. I remember he invited invited me out to a run in Miami, and he was actually at the end of the run. I was busting everybody's ass. At the end of the run, he was like, you know, we wanna we wanna. We got all this gear and everything. When this run was for B. I want to congratulate him on being, you know, selected to the NBA celebrity. I'm like, oh shoot! I think I'm the first influencer like to be selected for, you know, a celebrity game. And it's dope because since that moment, my boy Los got selected. A lot of uh, uh, Tristan yes. Jazz was selected. So a lot of social media basketball guys, they were able to get the opportunity yes. and you know made the most of it. But man, that, it was dope, man. That was my first time in New Orleans. Um, I had my family there, my mom, everybody was there. It was dope. That whole experience was was great. I got the opportunity to meet Baron Davis. Uh, from then on, we you know established a relationship. We had a television show via uh, Hulu and. Uh, Look, I got a question about that. Oh my bad, my bad, my bad. But just you know that <laughs> and winning MVP, man, it was dope because I I could have went for thirty, but they wanted me to they wanted me to keep changing jerseys and be different people throughout the game. So it was it mm -hmm. was tough for me to get in my groove. Met one of my favorite point guards and Jason Williams and White Chocolate. And we 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 yes. locked in to this day, bro. We that's my dog. Um, so I want to interview. I want to interview him, man. man. I man, I can set that up for you. Smooth down to earth kind of guy. But we'll you know we'll talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> but come fourth when fourth quarter came, 
Oh yeah, all that stuff out the it was out, out out the window. It was time to hoop. I think I scored majority of my points in the fourth quarter, and it was sixteen points, fifteen rebounds. Yep. And when I found out that it was like like voting, when I got taken out the game in the fourth, and we had a pretty substantial lead, I hit my boy. I said, "Hey, bro, take my phone, put on Twitter, vote, and tell these <laughs> people to vote for me." And my boy Lowe's <laughs> retweeted it, and went, that's crazy. I watched that moment the other moment the other day uh, when I got introduced. Um, uh, I forgot to like, damn, I forgot the lady that introduced me, man. My bad, my bad. But it was a dope moment, man. My mom was right there, and we had a good time after that. That that actually that added on to who I was, um, in general for my brand. And they like, oh, he can hoop too. Like, okay, like yeah. I was hoping Mark Cuban noticed and be like, hey, bro, you want to look, you know, look ten day. But Mark, he wasn't, man. he wasn't trying to do that. But just, it was an <laughs> overall dope experience, man, and just being able to be celebrated like that, um, in a dope city like New Orleans. It was it was it yes. was fun, man. It was it was yeah, it was amazing. No, it was dope to see all the the stars you on the floor with, like you said, Mark Cuban, uh, I think Master P, little, you know, little Romeo. So yeah, bro, I uh, got I got Fat Joe next to me in my ear talking about, hey, go get the new mixtape. I'm like, bro, they trying to present me with this MVP award. We got Candace Parker through. It was DJ Cali. It was man, it was yeah. crazy, bro. I'm in a room with all these people, and then. The following year, you know, in that celebrity game, I got to meet Jamie Foxx and the Migos, the whole, man, it was, man, it was dope, bro. No, uh, no, that like like you said, that was kind of one thing, because I noticed too as well, like, I got to see, like, bro, can actually hoop, like, going off, got got a jumper. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, seeing the little viral moment where you did, you know, the, the uh, James Harden Euro, <laughs> everybody going crazy. You know, so, uh, you know, th- that was dope, man. And like you said, you kind of opened the door for other influencers like yourself to come behind you in that same path. So I commend you on, on being someone to knock down that door, you know what I'm saying? Because it, it ain't always nice sometimes being the first one, you know, through it. So mm-hmm. you've been handling, you know, you know, you've been handling it with grace, bro. And, you know, I, I commend you for that. Man, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Now, speaking on that, because, uh, you know, you kind of speaking on Baron Davis a little bit. I was wondering, like, uh, uh, I've seen you built a strong relationship with Baron Davis. Like, how did that come about? You know, what are some things that you learned from him? Uh, man, it came about, you know, via the celebrity. And it was probably our first time uh, officially meeting. Um, I think we met a couple times in, in L.A. before then, but that celebrity ain't really, like, you know, confirmed our relationship. And BD, man, yeah. he's, he's dope. I don't know if you know, but BD has made, like, 40% more money uh, after retirement, you know, than he has while he was playing mm-hmm. ball. So, He's one of those entrepreneurs and strong-minded people mm-hmm. that that's like a dope businessman. BD be having a lot of things going on, bro. And he's always going to be himself. It don't matter if yeah. he in a room with Bill Gates or he in a room with with Shannon Sharp. You feel me? He going he yeah. going to be himself regardless. He going I don't it, it may come off arrogant, but it's not. That's just who he is. He just he just it's facts and it's all all truth. And some people, you know, some people can't yeah. really handle that. And you know, in this in this day and age, you you know, if you want to be successful, you don't got time to sugarcoat nothing. So, BD is one of those mentors. Yeah. You know, I looked up to, uh, gave me the opportunity to you know be on a, a a television series, and you know we still trying to get that season two pop um, popping off. But like I said, BD always he doing something different. He just came out with a whole new like Zoom type thing, bro. It's called uh, Jelly. You feel me? And it's like mm. it's like FaceTime. You know, FaceTime, but you know, you mm. do it via business, like his own version of Zoom. And it's it's dope. I, yeah. I experienced it with it, you know, yesterday. So like I said, shout out BD man and to this day he like, bro, you need to bring your ass to LA. We need to film season two. Like that's the thing. In order to get no, shit no. done with BD, you need to be in his presence. All that texting and all that, bro, he don't got time for that. He, he bro, just bring your ass to LA and we can set it up just like that. So shout out to BD man for all the continued opportunities that he presented to me. Facts. Shout out to the legend Baron Davis. And man, I'm not gonna lie, I watched the episode uh, of that of that show. What the fuck, Baron Davis, bro? Straight comedy, bro. It's underrated, low key. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I'm surprised. You know, I hadn't seen it before. Definitely, definitely uh, straight comedy. And yours, you know, great acting on your end as well. Uh, seemed natural. Didn't seem forced. So y'all all flow together. I, I like the characters. And Baron Davis is a good actor. He he a comedian too, damn man. And, and that's how he's he funny act, as hell, bro. man. That's him. Did he not act, bro? That's just being himself too. That's him, bro. That's literally <laughs> how he act every day. Like, bro, what, what the hell are you doing here, bro? Like, what? I'm trying to play this. I'm trying to do this puzzle right now, bro. And that's literally some shit BD yeah. would do, bro. So, man, that was dope. That was my look, first look, like we, look, we, full acting opportunity, man. So once again, shout out BD and that whole WTF staff. 
Look, we're going to have to tap in with BD too, man, because that is dope, though, you know, seeing, you know, being out in Cali and getting to the entrepreneur space, you know, you hear about all, you know, the tech valleys, you know, the Silicon Valley's out there. So to kind of see him in that entrepreneur space, uh, you know, still being able to, you know, create, generate revenue for his family even after uh, the NBA is dope to see. So uh, that's dope enough. Definitely love, you know, to hear hear more uh, about what he's got going on. Um, but for this next question, man, as we kind of get here near to the end, I'm wondering, like, what advice do you have for, like, aspiring social media influencers, content creators? Like, any advice uh, out there, you know, to, get, to, uh, to the youngest out there, you know, trying to start up and be success, successful online? That's, that's, the, that's the new thing now, being a YouTuber. Man, do it for you. Like, don't try to do it to get, like, of course you want to do it and be successful, but don't try to do it with the mindset that every video you do, it has to go viral. Man, I got over, like yes. I said, man, I started on Vine, bro. So I, I got over a thousand, thousand videos that's non, that's non basketball content that 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 do not, that's not viral at all. Even to this day, yeah. people they want to see basketball comedy, basketball content. But like I said, I'm an overall, I'm a everything type of comedian. You feel me? So I like to do yeah. non basketball skits, and they may not pop off. But like I said, those ten thousand yeah. people that seen that. You know, that's how you know that's going to be, that's your core community, and that's still 10,000 more views that, you know, you didn't have. So don't delete no videos because it didn't pop off. You know, don't, 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 don't get mad or, you know, get discouraged, bro. Just keep making the videos. I made a million videos before this video, that West Westbrook video popped me off. It literally, like, I got viral yeah. videos that was on World Star, but them little Vine videos, you feel me, which is dope, dope recognition, but that, you know, that, those may not be a video that's going to get you where you want to get. And I stepped out the realm, did some basketball comedy, something that was natural, you feel me? And like I yeah. said, it changed my life for the better. So like I said, bro, keep keep with the videos, bro, and consistency. That's the one thing. Just like with a podcast, bro, 99% podcasts don't make it past episode four, you feel me? And only 20%, only mm-hmm. and only not even 20, like 13% only make it to episode past episode 20. So if you you look yes. at it like that, it's it, it, if you just gotta keep going, like you can you it don't no matter how many views you have, no how many listeners, you gotta keep it with a consistency, bro, because it's gonna pop off. It's, it's like ten thousand hours, you know, ten thousand hours to perfection. You gotta keep putting in that work. So that's my advice. Do it for you, and keep yes. putting out that content. Man, some some real game right there, man. Because I kind of fall into that even as a podcast. I kind of fall into that trap sometimes myself, like. Uh, you know, I post something. If you, if you don't get a certain amount of views, you know, you, you, you try to take that reel down, you know, but as long as they see it, it's, you know, it's what matters. So I definitely love that, you know, staying consistent, uh, you know, putting putting good content out there and just letting the content speak for itself. So definitely some amazing game, uh, you know, for content creators and social media influencers out there uh, from BDOT. Uh, so moving on to my next couple questions, man. So I want to just speak on fatherhood, man. I know you said, uh, you know, you got a couple kids, just had a newborn as well. How has fatherhood affected your life and even your social media career? You know, has it has it changed up how you do content? Just speak on how fatherhood has affected you. Man, I, I'm doing I'm doing this podcast in my kids' playroom right now because they got the best Wi-Fi. So it's <laughs> like, look, man, having kids it can boost your Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. Yeah. Over, I ain't have a, I ain't have a father growing up, so it was just me and my mom. So, it, like, being a father mm-hmm. in my kid's life was always something that I was gonna make happen, you know, regardless of whatever situation I'm in. And I love my kids, man. I, like I said, I got three girls, and I got my boy. He's the oldest, uh, four, four. Aaliyah's gonna be two in October, and then Brandy, she's gonna be three months uh, next month on the fourteenth. But yeah, yeah, it. it, it it definitely changed my content. I really don't have as much uh, free time for the impersonations uh, like I used to. Mm-hmm. But like I, I always said, I don't want to be someone doing impersonations my whole life. If I'm 34. I'm yeah. not trying to, you know, keep impersonating grown men, you know. So that's why it's mm-hmm. dope that my boy Max is nice. He's doing his thing. Everybody be on his head like, man, you doing? You took this from me? Like, nah, man. Max is in my videos. Before he was who he was, I had his best friend in there, and his, his best friend wasn't, re, you know, reposting nothing, which I wasn't tripping, but Max looked at it like, bro, if you're not going to repost no videos, bro, let me be in a video. So it's dope how, you know, Max, you know, took the lane with it, and he's doing what he, you know, doing what he is with it to the day, you know, funny, funny as hell. So uh, just overall, man, I'm able to do family content. I got I got a couple viral videos of my kids. We doing some, we dancing, yeah. or just naturally just playing that. around. Uh, and I love that. I, I love that family content just because it's it's organic. You know, it's it's, it's tough to start like an actual like YouTube or page for the family because 
I do the videos just off of what I'm doing. My wife may be recording me, and then that's how it happens. I yeah. I know I can monetize a lot doing plan videos, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's work. Yeah, it's work, man. It's, it's it's work, which I don't I don't mind the work, but it's it's something that I'm not as passionate about versus you know just it coming naturally and it, and just me being as a a father in general, man. Just learning patience, you know, learning, you know, just seeing little use. You know, running around and it's like, man, I gotta, yeah. I gotta work hard so they don't have to work as hard as I am and just watch everything I'm doing, what I say around them. Uh, it just really just made me into a, a whole person in general. You know, versus four years ago, you know, pre-pandemic, I wouldn't think twice. I'm, I got a castle. I got yeah. half of the sons players at the crib, man. We having a good time <laughs> now. Like, nah, nah, nah. I gotta think. Think about everything, you know, yeah. before I do what and what and what and how will this impact, you know, my kids and my family. So shout out to my wife 100% for that. She keep me stable. She she my backbone yes. and she, you know, she hold it down. So, man, fatherhood and just fatherhood, husbandhood and just familyhood in general, <laughs> you know, coming from the hood. Some shit, you know, we ain't never see, grew up on it, man. It's, 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 I just want to do it the opposite of what my father did. And I feel like I'm doing, a, you know. I'm doing a great job, you know, I'm doing the best I can and I'm gonna continue to learn every day. I'm not perfect, I'm not a perfect father, nor a perfect husband. But like you say, we, we learn and that's what family yeah. is, collaboration over competition. Yes, sir. You know. Yes, sir. No, I love that. Uh and I commend you on what you're doing. Uh, you know, sometimes as black men we don't have the perception of being the best fathers, but I feel hopeful for the future. I'm seeing a lot more strong black fathers, I'm seeing a lot more men involved in their kids' lives. Um, so, you know, let, let's keep being that example. Um, even like when you're creating fa family content, just putting that good energy out there. You know, people need to see it as well. You know, uh, so, you know, I definitely commend you on that, man. And, you know, I feel like being a father has helped you mature it and branch out a little bit. You know, I see you doing hosting, comedy, DJing. You know, you're doing a little bit of everything now. So uh, that's dope, man. And my second to last question, I'm wondering, like, how did you get the name BDOT? Where does that come from? Oh, well, before my whole social media days, uh, my name is Brandon Armstrong, so everyone called me B.A., B.A., college, high school, mm. B.A., B.A. Um, it was crazy. My sophomore year of college, uh, my girlfriend at the time, she was on social media. I didn't even have an Instagram. I was just a Facebook dude, you feel me? Uh, and yeah. I was on Twitter. She created me an Instagram, <laughs> and, and she was like, uh, she was like, yeah, you can't put B.A. in there. So you should like spell the dots out. So that's why mm. B dot A dot and my jersey number at the time was five. And it was it was mm. still 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 then people were calling me B A. It's not till when I got on Vine. That's when people started calling me B dot. It was weird, bro. I'm like, mm. that's not my name. Stop calling me that. Like B dot. Like it was so <laughs> weird that people be like, so that's how we interact. And man, it just it stuck. And it's my home brand to this day. I got Dot on the side of my car, Dot Entertainment LLC, Baby Dot, Mama Dot. It's just, it, yeah, it's my it's That's my whole up. brand. So it's dope how that, you know, how that whole came about. But when I go back home, back to Atlanta, people still call me B.A. Now it's weird. It's weird now when people call me B.A. because I, I haven't heard it in my whole new 2015 and up life, you know. So, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It's dope, though. No, that, that's beautiful, man. Uh, and to move on to our last question, uh, our, our podcast is sponsored by Greatness Vodka. They're a local black-owned liquor company here in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, they have three great, uh, amazing flavors, strawberry, pineapple, original great, uh, original vodka, and strawberry, uh, stra peach strawberry as well. Um, for our final question, man, we'd like to know, what does greatness represent to you? Man, greatness represents, uh, what it represents to me is, it's kind of it's a personal thing. It's a you thing. I don't think you have to be mm. great at like a sport or financially to accomplish greatness. I think greatness is whatever goals mm. that you set personally, and you and you accomplish those, and you and you and you're doing it to your best ability. You feel me? Like, yes. I, I feel like my greatness is my family. You know, me. Mm. I'm still checking off stuff. I'm still checking off. You know, goals mm. for them and how how I want to how I want our family to be and uh, succeed as one, but I, I'm doing yeah. that. I'm doing that at a at a great level every day, and yeah. I feel as that um, I achieve greatness every day when I'm able to go to sleep, put food on put food on the table for my family. We wake up and we just do it all over again. 
So my greatness is yes. my greatness is, 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 is residual. You feel me? It is going to keep mm. coming just because my family's here, my I kids with me every day. So. I love that. Great. What I take from that, man, greatness comes from within. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So No matter how cliche uh, it sounds, a, uh, that's, that's what it is. You got to give, your, you gotta give yourself yeah, your flowers before someone can, can notice that about you. Facts. You know, uh, greatness is not a materialistic thing or a certain point that you reach. Uh, you know, it, it is within. You can, you can achieve uh, greatness, you know, like you said, w without being financially rich uh, or how others may perceive it. So, no, I definitely love that, man. Uh, once again, man, I, I appreciate you coming on the podcast today, man, you know, to bless us, you know, to get some game out there to social media uh, influencers, content creators, entertainers. Uh, hopefully, you know, they took some gems on what we talked about, uh, you know, about cl collaboration. Uh, and, man, uh, I just want to thank everybody for tapping in. Uh, subscribe now. Shout out B-Dot, man. You have the best rest of your day, man. And I appreciate you having me, man. Dope podcast, man. Can't wait to drop, man.